Hey, everybody. I just got a text here, and I've um, uh, Sparrow's not doing well. So um, I'm, I'm up here in Mendocino. I'm working with uh, a vet, et cetera. So anyways, um, hey, everybody. How are you? I'm still in Mendocino at my friend's house, um, Dara. Some of you might know her. And I want you to see the ceiling in this house. She and Brooks uh, bought this house, I don't know, like maybe, I don't even know, but they uh, they um, came and bought this place and basically gutted it, and it is a spectacular place to be hanging out. So um, I'm pretty excited about the video that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Um, Denise Lopez put it together for Metals, and... Um, she was working on the Q20 and working with some rulers, and some of it I knew, a lot of it I didn't know. So while it may look like it's repeating some stuff that I've done, it's not, because she brings a whole other flavor to the whole thing. So yes, Lori, it's a beautiful ceiling. I mean, this whole house is beautiful. One thing Dara did is it's painted colors um, that I would be, okay, Freddy's, you know, is really painted colors. And here, she has nailed it with the soft hues and tones. Let me see. Like, look at this here in the living room. And I said, how in the world? I mean, I would be chicken to do that. And what she did, because she's a photographer, is went outside and just took a ton of pictures and then blended the paint to that because she wanted the house to feel like that you... That not you're coming inside a house, but the outdoors is extending indoors. Pretty darn clever, okay? So, here we've got some stuff to show you. Um, maybe you already know, who knows, but doggone it, Janet Stone has done it again <laughs> at Paducah. Look at her stuff. Were we, um, were we so lucky to have her as a block of the month designer? And I think last year, if you had joined, you could get a, her pattern as an extra. Not this one, um, but you'll always find a lamb in it. And she's you and me is her tag. And I can see that lamb. Oh, I see. I see one, two, three so far. Um, her work is just extraordinary. If you've if you've never had the chance to see her work up close, I'm sorry because it's just it's impeccable. It's absolutely impeccable. So uh, then I got um, ah, where did that go? I got another um, another letter and uh, Don Sidon who is one of our faithful friends, got an award with Joyce Graff. And I just love what she wrote. So that's why I clicked the whole thing. Um, well, Color Me Speechless, Joyce and I ribboned at Spring Paducah. The competition reads like a who's who of top quilters. So I'm speechless and honored. Um, so it looks like Joyce did the quilting. And, um, oh, so the other thing I want to tell you this too, that's, that's kind of funny, small world. Dawn's daughter was best friends with my dear friend in Livermore. I think they were college roommates together. And we discovered that after, you know, we discovered after the fact, but congratulations, Dawn. It's, it's beautiful. And your friend did a really good job snapping that picture. Okay, and then, oh, 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 okay, then Penny got hold of me and sent me um, a quilt that she worked on, and it's a, an ode to Alice in Wonderland, and I was, I shoot, I forgot it was for her daughter, whomever, but she was making it for somebody, and she, um, a relative, yeah, sorry, 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 Penny, um, anyways, she wanted something with um, Alice in Wonderland, and Penny is a kind of a pattern type gal, and so she did this on her own, and she said, and you're welcome, Penny, and thank you for being a part here. She said that maybe she couldn't have done it had she not participated in some of the projects that we've been doing, and let's take a close-up. Uh, she, I think she calls it AKA down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Look at the chest there, cat. <laughs> So uh, you nailed it. I'm sure everybody's happy. And just make sure you got a thousand photographs of this thing 
before you say goodbye to it because you've really knocked it out, Penny. Congratulations. This makes me so happy to know that while I'm not traveling uh, too much, I'm a, my teaching is, con is different now. It's online like this and it's continuing. So this makes me very happy. All right. Oh, Costa Rica. Maria, you know, I got to go to Costa Rica when this quilt store was open there in San Jose. It was called like Basket. My Maria Teresa owned it and her friend. And oh my God, I just, I, it was so wonderful. And to be around all of you quilters, there's a ton of quilters down there, everybody, a ton. There's a really super vibrant guild. Okay, so let's get on to Denise and see what she has to say. And um, I'll be back in in a second as soon as we're done watching. And Denise, thank you so much. Oh, the other thing that this was done at VDTA, it was done in one take, people. One take. So please, let's do it. Hi, my name is Denise and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about ruler work, but in particular, um, I have some exciting new rulers from Quilter Select that I want to share with you. So we've got some straight lines, but more in particular, a few different clamshell sizes that I want to show you today um, because I think they're really great and, it, and it, it helps to see them in action to understand really how they work. Before I do that though, I want to talk just a little bit about ruler work in general. So I'm going to do some stitching here on Bernina Q20 sit down. Um, one of the reasons why I'm choosing to use this, the Q20 sit down is because it actually has a stitch regulator, which is a really nice benefit. And I know that you might not have that on your machine, um, but it, it, it's just a really nice opportunity to kind of not have to think about how fast or slow I'm stitching and really just focus on the control with the rulers. So let's talk a little bit about setup on ruler work. First of all, it's really important to have a ruler foot. So here is um, Bernina's number 72 foot. Um, the edge is a tall ledge here. It's about a quarter of an inch tall and it's a half an inch round. So from the needle being in the center, all the way around the foot is exactly a quarter of an inch distance. So that's the first thing that we need that's really important. Um, the next thing that happens with a ruler foot is the height of it is adjustable. Um, this one, it has a screw on the side so we can turn the screw to adjust the height of the foot. It's really important that the height of your foot is set properly um, most of the, if it's not the Bernina number 72 foot, chances are you have a screw on the side of the machine that you can loosen to raise and lower the foot. And I already know the question that you're asking yourself in your head, how do I know when it's the right height? Um, first of all, the, the, the foot needs to be able to um, move freely. Your fabric needs to be able to move freely underneath the foot and it kind of needs to graze. So the foot is kind of grazing along the fabric. If it's pushing down too far, um, you're not going to have free movement. And if it's sitting up too high, what happens with the fabric is it, I call it flagging. So the fabric will kind of flag up and down and you'll get skip stitches. So you'll get a jump in your stitches and easy, super easy solution. Just lower your foot a tiny bit if, it, if you're getting those skip stitches. That's a, that's a fairly common thing, so you might experience that. So the first thing that I would do to get started with my ruler work, I, in, in, in a sample that I've done here, um, I have used a few different rulers. I did the straight edge ruler, and I'm not gonna show you this one, but um, I am gonna talk for a moment about how I stitch in the ditch before I get started with my more decorative quilting, and I do this a lot. Um, so there's a size here, it is um, two and a half by eight, and then there's a larger size, brand new size that we have from Quilter Select, um, three by 12, three and a half by 12. Um, and it is a little bit larger, easier to handle and put your hands on. Um, so I'm excited about that one. So when I do my stitching in the ditch, what it's done for me is it's, it's framed in this area so that um, any quilting that I do won't shift the fabric too much. So it really keeps it nice and square and, and a good foundation. 
Um, I love to do that with invisible thread. So a monofilament thread, um, Floriani has a really beautiful clear and smoke color in the Floriani threads um, that I use in here because you can't see it if you're off a little bit. So why would you want to even risk being able to see it if you can go without? Um, so I'm going to, I, what I would do, and I'm not going to stitch this here because I don't have my monofilament thread on, but I would run the edge of the ruler. What happens is it, it's a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So I like to first set my needle in position and butt my foot right up to the edge of that and that is going to give me my quarter inch distance. And then you'll just run the fabric right along the edge of the foot. I'm gonna say this more than once, but one of the most awesome valuable features of these rulers is, and you know this if you've used some of the rotary cutting rulers from Quilter Select, but the back is a non-slip and it is so, so helpful when we're doing ruler work. So I'm gonna skip over the stitching in the ditch and I'm gonna focus on the clamshell. Um, this, this clamshell ruler is really cool. I'm pretty excited about it. So I have a rule, one rule that I, I, I need you to follow and we need to pretend, although this is a pretty small piece of fabric, I need you to think about every piece of fabric that you're quilting on as a queen size quilt. Because if I was going back to my straight line quilting, it would be really easy for me to just, you know, stitch this way and then turn my whole thing and stitch this way. And we're not, we're not turning our fabric all the time. It's okay to turn your fabric, but that is not, um, really maximizing the, the capability of what ruler work can do. So let me start with the clamshell and maybe it will make a little bit of sense. Um, so I'm going to start right over here in the corner. I'm going to lower my needle and this is how I start my quilting. So I've brought my bobbin thread up to the top of my fabric and I'm just gonna take a couple of stitches here to kind of anchor my, um, my stitching. I've lost the grip on that thread. Let me just get that out of the way. Sorry. And notice where my ruler is. It's not even part of the equation yet because um, one problem that we have, if we try to put the ruler in there too soon, the foot drops down, slams into the ruler, and that can kind of create some other problems. So the first few stitches that I take, I take with no, um, no, no ruler in sight. I just kind of anchor my stitches in place. Then once my foot is down and established, that's when I'll that's when I'll incorporate the ruler. So let's look at some of the markings on the ruler. Um, if I sneak it right up there, you'll see that contrast. So it can nestle right into the foot. And what happens is, if you can see here, there's lines on the ruler going straight across. Those are gonna be where the bottom of my clamshell lives, okay? So I'm going to keep my eye here to make sure that the lines on the ruler stay level with my seam line, because that's where I want the base of my clamshell to live. And I'm just going to um, move the ruler around my foot. Let's talk about hand positioning for a minute. You're not moving the ruler, you're moving your quilt. Let's think about this as if we're machine quilting with our quilt. The ruler is just gonna be our guide. So if you push too hard down on the ruler, that's really gonna prevent the fabric from moving easily. So, so I'm gonna hold on to my quilt and move my quilt in the motion that I, that I need to go. The ruler is gonna guide me and I'm just gonna kinda hold on to the ruler a little bit. So not holding on to the ruler with dear life as my main control, I'm really holding my quilt. And the new gloves from Quilter Select are gonna help me a lot because these have grip on them so I don't have to push down that hard. It really, a light grip is gonna um, help me move. So, so watch my hands as I move, and I'm just gonna guide the foot around the ruler. And I'll tell you my, I'll tell you my, my weak spot. Well, maybe you'll see my weak spot. When I get to the corner, it's gonna nestle right in that edge, which is awesome. Um, I'm gonna get these out of here now so they're just out of my way and set the ruler back in I can be wherever and I really just always want to be watching that baseline there so again I'm gonna work my way around I'm not going too fast this is not a race ruler work is not a fast process but it's a guided process did you see my weak spot it's about uh, two o'clock <laughs> because you're in this momentum of working around the ruler and then you kind of forget about the momentum and I need to I need to maybe even put a marking on the ruler to be like hey this is where I need to pay attention to things and not uh, not lose track of where I'm trying to go so just gradually working my way around if if, if your knuckles 
are starting to turn white, you are pushing down too hard and you're, you need to just relax. So I, I guess I have more than one rule. Um, you need to just relax and try to have fun with it and use the ruler as a guide. So I'm gonna continue to the edge. And what's really cool about the size of ruler that I've selected and the piece of fabric that I'm working with is over here, it's gonna come right to a half of a clamshell. And I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, so I've reached my end. I had to use a little bit more control to make sure I didn't go past the edge of my seam here. I don't have that break as I did on the bottom. But what I'm gonna do is work my way up. It was convenient to have that half a clamshell there because now what I can do is just slide my ruler up and check out how awesome these markings on the ruler are. There is a printed line here showing you where my previous row of stitching should live. Okay, and I'm gonna be completely completely honest with you your ruler is going to shift while you quilt I promise you your ruler is going to shift so get to a spot where it's easy for you to, to adjust maybe on a on the on a curve um, I can adjust from up at the top to shift sideways and it will be completely unnoticeable so I'm pretty well lined up with my lines <coughs> here if they're always perfect you're doing an amazing job but I they're it's okay if they're not perfect because we have a lot of wiggle room. So I'm gonna continue on with my next row and uh, you can see what that looks like as I adjust. So if I notice that my next row needs to shift left to right a little bit, this is the time that I would do it. I'm up at the top. If I had to shift by a stitch or two, you would never notice it. So up at the top is where you'd wanna shift your, um, your left to right adjustment on your ruler because the ruler is going to probably slip a little bit or your fabric will shift and that's okay. And down at the bottom is where I might do a little bit of a vertical shift. I'm doing pretty good right now, so I won't adjust that. And I'll just shift my ruler over so I can follow the next couple of rows of markings. Again, I promise you ruler work is not a fast process, so take your time, adjust often, um, re-situate your hands, make sure you don't have too much weight in your lap um, because that really just prevents you from being able to have um, easy movement. So the next thing that I would do is I would continue stitching up here that half of clamshell, and then I would continue on exactly the same way as I did on the other side. If you need some more creative ideas for uses of the rulers, the back of the package, <coughs> Um, shows you just some really cool ideas here and then if you go to the Quilter Select website there's a lot more images there. I want to briefly talk about sashing and maybe some just other creative ways of utilizing. Um, actually you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you how to finish this because we got to end here don't we? So I'm gonna finish off that last one and I'll pretend that I'm done here. So I'm gonna do a couple of little short anchoring stitches and I'm actually gonna be done. And remember what I asked you before to, to think about was um, this being a queen size quilt. So for me to get underneath here and snip my threads on my queen size quilt is not really my favorite thing to do. So I just rocked back on my heel on the Bernina and that brought my needle and my presser foot up so I can move my fabric away, grab a hold of that thread and then pull up my bobbin thread snip everything all at once and then the back looks really clean and finished so that's just a nice little um, tip there for free motion um, around the edge of my little smaller sashing um, you could do the same kind of thing and do small little scallops here you could have one on either side and have them butt up to each other you could have them be larger and intersect um, these little guys are really cute and fun and you could do multiple layers of those. Um, larger one around the outside is a lot of fun. So there's a lot of scaling that you can do because there's four different sizes of the clamshell or four different rulers with two sizes on each. So really eight different sizes of the clamshell um, options to work with. Um, one last tip that I'm going to give you before I let you get quilting is your thread choice. So if your thread is really thick and bold and stands out a lot, it's going to show up a lot. So if you're 
practicing and learning, um, choose a thread that's maybe a little bit thinner, maybe that blends in more and you will have some better success. And that's, that's my goal for you is to have um, fun results. Sometimes ruler work can be the basis of your quilting. Sometimes it can be just the foundation where you go in and you embellish with some extra free motion quilting. So I, I challenge you to play around with that, especially when you use the larger sizes. It really gives you a lot of opportunity to quilt inside there with some free motion detail of your choice. I hope you learned some things. I hope you'll give the clamshell rulers a try and thanks for watching. Wow. <laughs> right? Yay, Denise. Let me give you her handle. And then I want to talk about some things that I learned there. Um, again, it's Denise Lopez from Nettles in Salt Lake City. And um, her Instagram, YouTube, etc. is at DGL Designs. Okay, that's her handle. So you can follow her on Instagram, YouTube and all that good stuff. Okay, this is what I learned. I, I, I was taking notes like crazy. Okay, first of all, I didn't know about that flagging. And um, I always assumed that if I were skipping stitches that my needle was bummed out. I didn't know that perhaps it could also be the height and weight of the presser foot. So that was interesting. Also, um, the monofilament thread she was talking about is a monopoly and it is through Quilter Select. I think she said R and K or whatever. I mean, it's all it's all the same family. But if you're looking for it, um, also, uh, yeah, there are four sizes of the clamshell. I thought initially she was doing the large one, but no, she wasn't. So go check it out on the website. Um, and I loved, I loved her finishing technique of finishing the thread. And she said something really fast and really important if you have a Q20, okay? Um, what it is, is you've got your gas foot, right? And and here I'm going to press down on the gas, whoop, whoop, right? And down here on the base part of your um, gas pedal, you have three different options to set it. Like for instance, on my regular Bernina, if I click it, my needle goes up, okay? Um, on the Q20 there, if you've got one, you guys go play with this. There is what is called the knot feature. And it's, you got the three places that you can, um, well, it's not that. I'm just kidding. It might be like that. Something like that. There's something on this side and something on this side to choose. We'll choose the knot feature. That is not what it looks like. But when you then click this part of the foot, both the needle comes up and the presser foot. And I think the other two options are the presser foot or the knot function or um, needle up. Now the knot function is not the same as the knot function on your domestic Bernina. And that was something that was a revelation to me. So she said it very quickly. If you've got that machine, try doing the knot thing. I think it's like a rope that goes together or something like that. Um, I also learned to take a few stitches without the ruler. Duh, you know, if you know that that center foot is a half an inch across and a quarter from the needle to the edge of it, then you just put your little presser foot down right on the edge when you're securing those seams and then go ahead and put your ruler down. That I learned too. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking at my notes. Oh, uh, Jackie, um, my trusty phone, you were wondering in England and the UK where you can get these rulers. Um, fortunately, Ricky Brooks got back to me and uh, Lord's Sewing carries Quilter Select. So that was news to me, Lo Lord's Sewing. And I think it's L-O-R-D-S. And I'm not sure if he did a typo, but he wrote me S-E-W-N-G. All right. So, um... Yeah, I think we've got it all. I think I think we're good here. Let me see. Um, Bobby, if Denise is in your area, you're lucky because she just really knocked it out and she made it look so easy. And I, I think she gave us permission to have things screw up. I mean, that's okay. It's going to happen. Um, it's like when I teach hand quilting, 
people are moaning about their first stitches and I'm like, and I'm like, get over it. If you, if, when you're done with the quilt, if you don't like it, if you can't stand it, then take it out. And I think that that would be true with machine quilting too. Don't get hung up on each little, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And then at the end, it still drives you crazy. Pick it up. Be my guest. Okay. Oh, so Jackie, so you know where uh, Lords is then, huh? I, oh, I see Dara. Dara, wave to everybody. Are you dressed? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, having a, we're having a girl time here. So, okay. Um, yeah, Bobby, you're lucky she's in your area. I mean, I... I'm lucky that I know her, so let's just start with that. Okay, so on Monday, um, I'm going to go home this weekend, and what we're going to deal with are um, bias stems, when to do bias on that quilt, when to do straight of grain, and I'll show you different options, but then I'll show you how I did it, all right? So, okay, we are good. I'm going to go make us tortilla soup. Does that sound good? That's a, that's a day-long process that'll make this house smell just wonderful. So I appreciate you guys choosing to spend your time with me. And um, I'll see you Monday. And um, yeah, have a good weekend, people. I know I am. I, my weekend started here. And this place is beautiful. I don't know if you can see it or not, but no, you can. It's all blown out. It's all blown out, but it's just perfect. Okay. Bye-bye guys. Thanks so much.